Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, my brothers and sisters, fellow partakers of the riches of the kingdom of God, you who are hungry and thirsty for the word of God and who love and adore Jesus of Nazareth, Savior of the souls of men, he who has brought light into darkness and joy into gloom. Greetings in the name of Jesus, and may his blessings be upon you today, friend. Well, welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now, on our journey for truth, as we are studying the Bible together each morning, I want to take a pit stop because in my Bible reading yesterday, I came across a passage that really spoke to me, and I felt like the Lord wanted me to offer it unto you as a word of encouragement. But before we do that, I want to simply give you a thought to ponder today. There is much emotion in youth. But in the aged, in the mature, in the elder, there is stillness, somberness, quietness, reflection, and pondering. Well, with that being said, if you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter 12, and I want to begin at verse 1. Now it says, Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, what the writer of Hebrews is telling us here is simply this. All those who have gone before us and have paid the price of what it means to be a true follower of Jesus, who have suffered greatly for his name, are cheering us on, and we are surrounded by them. People like Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, King David, Job, Peter, James, John, Paul, Gideon, Samson, and other great heroes of the faith, they surround us and encourage us to live godly lives. So because of this, as we can see in the passage, let us lay aside every weight, everything that weighs us down in our journey the things that hold us back from being the best that we can be for our King Jesus and his kingdom. You see, these things that weigh us down, these are the things that we call sin, and they do so easily beset us. They keep us from giving our all. They slow us in our race. And as we know from the book of Romans, our race isn't set to the swift. We are to run our race with patience looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If he and others whom we have just named, these great heroes of faith, if they ran their race faithfully, so should we. And we should remember the reward of our race just as they did when they ran for the joy that was set before them. For they despised the shame that was thrown upon them knowing that it was this that fit them for the kingdom of God, that made them ready for the kingdom of God. And of course, Jesus is the ultimate example of this. We are told in chapter 11, verse 38, the world was not even worthy of these men. And yet they walked through this world, keeping themselves pure unto God. And so too are we, friends, in verse 14, it says, follow peace, be in harmony with all men, and follow after holiness, which is purification. And we purify ourselves by keeping ourselves separated from this world in which we live. Because without doing so, no man will see the Lord. So let us look diligently, lest any of us fail of the grace of God allowing any root of bitterness to spring up within us, because it is this root of bitterness that many are defiled. Now jump over to verse 28, 
Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, let us have meekness, let us have tenderness, let us have kindness that we see so clearly through the life of Jesus so that we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Friends, I understand how this life can beat upon us. Jesus himself said, if you establish yourself on a solid foundation, when the storms of life beat against you, you shall not be moved. Because all of our hope, all of our trust is in the Lord God whom we serve. And we know he is victorious in all things. So when we feel like we cannot go another step, when we feel like we cannot endure another minute, let us remember those who have gone before us, who have walked this path faithfully, who have suffered greater than anything we have ever known, and yet they remained faithful. And so let us endure the hardness of this world, both that we have experienced, we are experiencing, and we're going to continue to experience in the future as the drawing of the coming of the Lord Jesus gets closer and closer. Let us remain faithful in running our race, in denying ourselves daily, nailing our flesh to the cross, then taking up that very cross and following in the steps of Jesus in how we conduct ourselves and we live our lives in this world in which we are traveling through as strangers, as pilgrims on our way to a better country, a country that cannot be moved, hallelujah. Now you know your life, friends. You know the things that are weighing you down that are vexing your soul from day to day. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to encourage you that if you will rid yourself of these things, your journey will be so much more productive. You will find the way easier to travel. You will find your experience more joyful. And so as you examine your life, set these things aside that are weighing you down. And as you empty yourself of these things, allow the Lord Jesus through his Holy Spirit to fill these empty voids so that you can experience in this life all the blessing that he has set aside for you. As we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved brother, dearly beloved sister, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and all filthiness of the spirit so that we may perfect holiness in the fear of God. For as we read in verse 29 of Hebrews 12, our God is a consuming fire. Allow him to consume the things that are within you, friends, that need to be put away, that need to be set aside and allow the fullness of his Holy Spirit to reside within you so that you will be a gleaming example of all those around you of the grace and the love and the tenderness of the Lord Jesus. Well, I'm so thankful again that you're with us, friends. I pray that this word has blessed you and encouraged you, motivated you, challenged you, maybe even rebuked you so that on that day when we stand hand in hand before our King Jesus, you can stand faithfully knowing that you have done all you can do to obey his commandment of denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following him. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I do so truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.